All right, let's get this out of the way up top. I know, okay? I know. What is up, nerds? My name is Travis, and this what is up nerds? My name is Travis and this. What is up nerds? My name is Travis and this. What is up nerds? My name is Travis and this. What is up nerds? My name is Travis and this is Wonder Nerd. The Sand... Ooh. The Sandlot is a childhood classic, a nostalgic piece of cinema if ever there was one. Released to theaters in April of 1993, the story about a group of baseball-loving kids in the summer of 1962 captured America's hearts, and it also captured about $35 million at the box office. Some people would consider Sandlot a cult classic, given its mix of positive reviews at the time of its release, but I, and anyone else with a brain and a heart, would just consider it a classic classic. I mean, hey, it spawned two sequels. Were they necessary? No. But they're there, and so let's talk about it. The Sandlot 2, or The Sandlot Continues to Absolutely No One, follows a new group of kids playing on The Sandlot. Smalls' little brother is our main character, our narrator. And our Benny the Jet Rodriguez is David Rocket Durango. Great name. This was my first time seeing Max Lloyd-Jones, and I've been hooked ever since. That man is beautiful. And then there's the Sandlot 3. The Sandlot heading home. This one has time travel. Kinda. I did a full-on review of this movie like 47 years ago, and kind of razzed on it and made it seem worse than it actually was. And don't get me wrong, it's bad. But I watched it again recently, and I kind of enjoyed it. Squints is back. And Benny. Holy shit. But only Chauncey Leopardi reprises his role because Mike Vitar is too busy fighting fires and doing other stuff. Google it. The Sandlot 3 follows yet another group of kids playing on the Sandlot, but this time they're led by Luke Perry. No, seriously, Luke Perry is a cocky all-star baseballer who gets hit by a pitch and suddenly he's a child again in the 1970s with the brain of his adult self. It's a real 13 going on 30 situation, but not as... Good. This one is definitely the outlier of the franchise. The first two movies were essentially the same one with enough differences to make them both worthwhile. But this one, God, this is like Pitch Perfect 3. It's just a completely different movie. But this video isn't going to be me comparing and contrasting this trilogy and picking them apart piece by piece. I'll do that some other time, trust me. What I really want to talk about is the timeline, because it doesn't make sense. Okay, hear me out, alright? The first Sandlot takes place in the summer of 1962. That's fine. That's fine. It's the first movie. It's setting everything up. We're good. The second movie, alright, you with me? The second movie takes place in the summer of 1972. We have time jumped 10 years into the future. That's fine. This makes sense. The original Sandlot kids have all grown up and moved on. The Sandlot is just a memory for them at this point. This works, mostly. I do have trouble believing that Smalls has a brother that young, but me and one of my brothers have a 10-year age difference, so I'm going to let it slide. Okay, now this is where things get a little messy. The Sandlot 3, the Sandlot heading home, takes place in the summer of 1976, a mere four years after the second movie. Where'd those kids go? 
Where'd David Durango and even Smaller Smalls go? Did they just get booted off the sandlot so that this new group of booger munchers could take over? So that the kid from Bad Santa could take over? Huh? Look, I get that the Sandlot kids are like 12 or 13 years old apiece, give or take, but when does one stop playing at the Sandlot? Till the end of middle school? High school, maybe? Can it go on forever? What happened to the girl from the second movie? She lived right next door to the Sandlot. Did she just move away after four years? David Mickey Evans. What the fuck's going on? The Sandlot movies are, at their core, family films. The first one is more of a family film in the sense that the whole family could watch and enjoy it, and the adults don't feel like they're watching a low-effort kids' movies. They devolve in quality, for sure, but I can still put any of them on and have a good time watching. Not only is there a fourth movie in the works, which will apparently be a prequel set in the 1950s, but there's also a TV series in the works over at Disney Plus with the original cast reprising their roles, playing their characters as 30-somethings in the 1980s. Uh, but since it's been about half a decade since we heard anything about either of these projects, I'd say they're not happening. Or, in baseball terms, you're out! My name is Travis, and this is Wondered. Hey, if you like videos about movies, TV shows, snacks, etc., consider subscribing, because I make it a point to be here almost every Monday, pushing out new content for you to enjoy. Uh, I'm pretty close to 500 subscribers, which is pretty cool, and I'd like to get there sooner rather than later uh no rush though it's it's not that big of a deal but you know it'd be nice uh i know this was another short uh or video than what i'd been putting out like last month around this time but uh my life outside of youtube is uh relatively busy but i didn't want to lose the momentum of a regular upload schedule so I pooped out this one for you, but I had fun doing it. I love the Sandlot, and the timeline has always bugged me, but how about you? My name is Travis, and remember, nerds rule.